All right, so let's look at the number two here. Two identical moons, moon A and B, orbit a planet. The mass of M0 on each moon is significant, but less than the mass of MP of the planet. At some point in their orbits, the planets of the two moons are aligned as shown in the figure. The following dots represent the moons when they are the location shown in the previous figure. On each dot, draw on label four. Okay, just draw a free body diagram. Moon A is going to be pulled on both the planets and the moon here. So we're going to call that, say, F on B on the plant from the planet and then we'll call oh sorry not B this is moon A uh, force from the planet on A and we'll call this F A B and then moon B though feels a force pulling to the right and left this left force is F A B I'm going to call those and those two are the same they're equal and opposite by Newton's third law and then this is the force of the planet on B and those are the only gravitational forces acting on that system Consider the net gravitational for force exerted on each moon. Justify the magnitude of the net force exerted on moon A could be much larger than the magnitude of exerted B. Okay, so the net force here is F planet of the B minus FAB. This thing could be huge compared to these, and that could happen if RB, like if the distance to RB is very small. If RB is much smaller than RA, then the force of pull on the gravity of the planet is very large compared to to FAB or FPA. So um, the net force on B would be bigger. Oh, whoops, I'm doing this backwards. On A, this is B could be bigger, would be bigger. Oh, they're asking about why moon A's could be bigger. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the second part of the question, they actually ask you, they ask you both ways. Why could moon A be bigger? Why could moon B be bigger? So that's where moon the force on moon B could be bigger. The one other one could be, well, maybe moon A and moon B are, are much closer together. The other one could be that, um, um, well, moon A and moon B add together. So you could say like here, let, if, if R A is very close to RB. So the two moons are, to, are, are uh, two moons are close together. Uh, well, no, no, actually, let's do it where, let's just make moon B's net force zero. Like we could just say where like this guy, the net force could be zero. So if AB was about equal to F planet on B, then the net force on a, B would equal zero, and the net force on A would be non-zero, right? And so it would be greater than zero, right? Because we're basically saying if these two cancel each other out, that could be, and that could be set up depending on the, and, and that could occur, could occur depending on the, could occur depending on the positions on RA and RB. Uh, I think that'd be sufficient to just describe that in just a sentence or so. Describe an expressions for both of the quantities, um, the net force on A on moon A. So here we have to add the two forces. So FAB, so, so we're going to do the F on the planet of A plus FAB, and that would be G. And for the planet on A, it's M planet, right? So like if I want to do the force from the moon, the planet pulling on the moon, I do the planet and the moon's mass divided by their distance, Ra squared. And then FAB is the two planets together, M0 times M0, and their distance is Ra minus Rb. Because if you look at the picture, just scrolling back up, the distance from here to here is going to be Ra minus Rb, right? Okay. So that's that one. And then this one is going to be, well, you're going to do the planet on B minus FAB. And so that would be GMP M0 over RB squared plus GM0 squared. Oh, no, minus, because the FAB is going in the other direction. So minus, and then this is the same force, just in the minus direction. Same force as this one, just left, right? And that's planet B. Could the expressions part C support your answer, your reasoning in part B, I? 
Well, so yes. So here, it doesn't really matter what you answer. Just whatever you stated here, you just want to match it here. You match it with your equations here. So what I said here is if AB is equal to F, if these two forces were equal. So I would say yes, if G M P M zero over R B squared equals G M zero squared over R A minus R B squared, then um, uh, the net force on B would equal zero and the net force on A would not necessarily equal zero. Okay. How about this uh, for the second reasoning? How about force the, this, the second one we said is if RB, so we said if RB is much smaller than RA, then you can look at this equation here and you could say that this guy um, is very big compared to like, like, okay, so if RA is much smaller, sorry, what did they say? If RB is much smaller than RA, then this guy's about this guy is going to be about equal to uh wait what did I say R A R B is much smaller than R A R B is much yeah 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 that's what I wanted if R B is much smaller than R A then um, this is about equal to R A but this number is huge because R B is much smaller than R A right like this is about equal to R A and so you you could just say that this is going to be a huge number. And then these two are, are practically going to be very tiny. All three of these numbers would be very tiny, right? So in the interest of saving time, because I wasted my time recording these while my microphone wasn't working, um, I'll just copy that there. And I could say then um, I would point out that those are approximately equal to RA, right? So this would be, this is F net on A. This is F net on B. It's approximately equal to G M P M zero over R A squared plus G M zero squared over R A squared, right? Because R A is is much R B is very tiny compared to this, and this is about equal to G M P M zero over R B squared minus G M zero squared over R A squared. But like these three are all like very tiny compared to this guy, right? But I would say these three are tiny because they are much bigger than than compared to G M P M zero over R B squared, and so that would tell me that F net B is greater than F net A. All right. 